So thank you very much for coming and welcome to this talk that I'm doing on rule engines and Joomla and what I call the joy of meta and that's just because my products are called MetaMod and Meta Template, and I'm kind of the, the MetaMod guy. So um, that's, that's hopefully the joy of, of um, using these particular tools to achieve stuff that I've never seen any other way to do in Joomla. So this is stuff that I'm really excited about and I'm passionate about because um, it solved problems for me and the sites that I work on, and uh, I really want to be able to share this with other people too. So, Joomla rule engines. Um, just want to define a few terms to start with. Um, the first one is obviously meta, meta template and meta mod. What are they? Very briefly, um, meta mod is a way, if you haven't already met it before, of targeting particular modules onto your site in ways that are much more flexible than you can do in normal Joomla. And if you've used Advanced Module Manager, um, you'll know that Advanced Module Manager has also got some great, great things that you can do. This kind of goes even a step further um, than, than what you can do with Advanced Module Manager, which is a great product and I love it. Um, that's a piece of Van Westen's, um, but just give it some context. Meta Template. Um, was created uh, because people using MetaMod said, you know, it's great that I can target my modules onto my VirtuMart homepage or my VirtuMart checkout page, but actually I want a whole new template on that page and I can't do it. So what can I do? So Meta Template applies some of the same kind of logic, but in a much nicer, much better way than MetaMod does um, and allows you to control templates and lots of other things on your site and that's really the excitement that I've got about talking to you. It's not just about templates. So why am I talking about rule engines and rule chains? Um, a rule engine is, is something that's often referred to as a, as a business rule engine. And so a, a rule engine um, enables you to um, define particular conditions that should occur and then an action which should take place if those conditions occur. And you can look at it in terms of a flow chart. A flow chart of, you know, if this thing happens, then, um, then go over to here, and if this thing happens, then do something else, and sort of moving down the flow chart. So rule engines can be, um, they can be triggered or self-triggering. So a triggered one means you give it some kind of input from the outside and then it does its calculations and works out what it needs to do um, based on some kind of business rules and business decision and then performs its actions. Um, a self-triggering one or a standalone one, there are proper terms for these things, I'm not familiar with all of them. Um, it, often just stand alone and they might be watching your business processes, they might be watching your business inventory and if your inventory hits a certain um, low limit then they might instigate a new order. So there is quite a lot of, um, of business knowledge or domain specific knowledge that is built into rule engines, that's, that's the reason for them. They kind of translate business conditions into concrete actions that have to occur. That's not so much in Joomla terms, but, but just in general what a rule engine is. A rule chain is kind of just that flow chart of operations. So you might be thinking, okay, so what does this have to do with Joomla, and why should I care? Well, Joomla has essentially a rule engine of its own. It, it, it operates according to a series of, of rules, and you could look at it like a flow chart, something like this flow chart. So it's not supposed to be too scary, it's triggered by a request. So a request, a web request comes into Joomla and th that gets examined. So first of all, the, there's a chance for plugins to run. Then it splits into the item ID and option. They're taken from the, the request or if you're using search engine friendly URLs, they're kind of hidden away, but they're still there. So every request has got an item ID and option. Well, almost all. Um, any other URL parameters um, then control the component that has been determined from the item ID and the option. So that's on one side of it. That sort of starts to govern what you see on your page. On the other side, the item ID is extracted and that's used to calculate some other important things on your site. For example, the module selection and the template selection. Um, 
the item ID also interacts with the menu system, so it can pull out a bit more information about what it needs to do based on the menu item that the item ID points to. So after that, um, on the left-hand side, your component gets rendered, and that's affected by template overrides, if there are any. And on the other side, the modules get rendered, and they can also be affected by template overrides. So all these things get munged together. The component and the modules are combined to create the page output within the template, and then more plugins can run over that if you want to as well. Um, and amongst all of that stuff, the, the visible menus that you see on the, on the screen, on the page, um, in, including the highlighting of, of the active menu, um, they're generated sometimes in modules, so you have, might have a menu module that, that uh, renders that stuff, um, or it's sometimes in your template. Your template might have its own system for rendering those menus. So that's, that's the flowchart, that's the kind of rule engine, if you like, that, that Joomla has on its own. Now, again, you might think you know, there's not much point in describing it in this way, but it, my point is that we start to think like Joomla thinks when we've been doing it for long enough. And when we, when we start to think in this way, there are certain things that you would maybe like to do on the web and your customers would like to do on their website um, that just seem very, very difficult to us. So, so you might get questions like, how do I or can I um, modify the output? So with our Joomla hats on, we think, um, okay, so we want to modify the output. Um, we could set some plugins. So some plugins could act on the intermediate output um, or on the final output. And so that can, that can change our, you know, what appears on the page. So that's sorted. Um, Okay, so how do we make completely new types of pages? Well, that's going to be uh, a new component is going to define a new type of page. So we think about making a new component. So fair enough, that's sorted. How do we alter the look and feel of a page? Well, that's obviously going to be templates. So we, we decide to give it a new template. We apply that to an existing page to give it a new look and feel. Um, we can also change the, uh, the selection of modules on the page, and that's going to make it look a bit different. And we could do overrides in the template that can then affect some of these other things that are going on. So what's the problem? Well, I think the, well, one of the problems here is that there are lots of different methods that I've just outlined, so components and modules and overrides, lots of things that are required to affect the output in different parts of the system. So, yeah, plugins, overrides, um, SEO systems, uh, you might you know, have S, uh, SH404 or something else and you use that for, for changing you know, parts of the URLs or you know, titles and things, so that's yet another place that you have to go to change things on your site. Um, this makes it difficult to synchronize and order some of those different changes based on the same criteria. Now, what do I mean by that? Um, let's say you wanted to, for, for logged in users, you might want to change the template of a particular page, and you might also want to remove certain menu items. So let's say for sake of argument that you can actually do that. I'll show you how later, but normally in Joomla, you can't do either of those two things. But let's, let's say that you could. So, okay, it's kind of imaginary at the moment, but um, how would you use the same rule, you know, de detecting that a user is logged in or not, to actually affect two things at the same time? Well, you can't really do that. You'd probably go into the template system and, you know, click some option for, for showing a particular thing to logged in users or logged out users. And you'd go somewhere else to, to do the same kind of thing with your menu items, if you could. Um, and so that's the third thing, that some tasks are simply not available in Joomla, so it's um, a bit immaterial unless you can solve that problem, um, like removing menu items. So that might sound like um, all of a bit of a bummer, but what I want to be able to do is to have one place where I can make these, make these decisions, like, if a user is logged in, I want to customize the experience for this user. And I don't want to have to go around to 100 places in the system to um, 
you put a little rule here saying, you know, if, it's, if the user's logged in, show this template, and if the user's logged in, show these modules, and if the user's logged in, do something else somewhere else. I would really like to do those things all in the same place if I could, because that's, that can become a business thing. So for my business, logged in users have particular rights and roles and should be able to see particular things. And that's just a very simple example that could get you know, a lot more interesting, and it will very shortly. So what kind of things would I like to be able to do to my Joomla site if I could? And um, some of these things you can. Template choice is an obvious one. That's what meta template started off as being. Different elements within a template I might want to switch on and off or alter according to various conditions, whatever those conditions might be. The selection of modules I might want to change. Module parameters and contents are other things I might want to change for different groups of users. The choice of which menu items are visible, which is a real pain in Joomla, trying to, trying to get rid of a menu item on a particular page when it's part of, an, of a much bigger menu. The titles of menu items, um, parameters of menu items, which menu item will be used for the front page. So, for example, if you have a, uh, two domain names pointing to the same Joomla site, then it might be nice if one of them actually uses a different front page to the other. But, of course, we can't do that. Um, the HTTP headers or HTML headers, page redirection, all kinds of things that you might want to script. You might want to make part of your flow chart. And there is more. Um, HTML head elements, title and meta description. You might want to log things as a result of some condition. Um, present user notices. The page content, you might want to do search and replace. Page caching, um, depending on the other things that are changing on the page, you might need to cache differently so that um, you know, one user doesn't create the cache based on their preferences and the next person comes along and they get the first person's page because the cache didn't recognize that their conditions were different. Um, email could be sent out and other component specific actions. So there might be shopping cart operations or ordering operations or you know, any other kind of things, mailing lists or just anything else that you're running on your site, you might want to script in some way. So um, I haven't got a slide for, for the next bit, but what are some of the conditions that you might like to use to trigger some of these actions to take place? Um, date. So before a particular date, you might want certain things to happen. After a certain date, different things. Time of day. So you could have um, specials that are um, promotions that, that only operate at, at certain hours of the day. So therefore, you might want to set up your site a little bit differently during that time of the day in order for your customers to see that. Um, there are, there are so many things <laughs> you can make this, you know, diff different types of pages, different um, sections or categories that, th that the article is in. So for, for a particular section, you show one template or certain menu items. And if they're looking at something in another section, you might want to change all that stuff around. Again, we just don't have the ability to do a lot of this stuff, let alone script it and do it all at once. So um, perhaps I could show you, um, yeah, I'm just wondering about which example to do. Um, I'll show you very briefly just um, what this looks like so that you've, you've got this in your head as we, as we move along. And Okay, this, this one is, um, if I can get it. In fact, I'm not going to show that one. <laughs> okay, this, um, this is a particular rule. It's divided into two parts. The, the left-hand side of the rule is the conditions. So that's what will trigger this particular rule to happen. And the right-hand side gives the actions of what happens if the rule succeeds or what happens if the rule fails. So this is a single rule, and it's part of a larger rule chain. 
So I'll show you the, the chain. So the chain is a, is, a, is a big set of rules. Oops, hang on. That wasn't supposed to happen. Cancel. Okay, most of these ones are disabled at the moment. It's on my test site, or one of my many test sites. Um, so I've got a whole lot of, of rules. Now, as a result of any one of these rules, it might uh, set a particular template or an, a number of different actions. And then after that, um, you can see there's a column there saying success template. So it's either continue or stop. So if you detect a particular thing has happened, then you might want to stop processing the entire chain. So what happens is that this chain gets, that gets run when the page request is first received. So Joomla gets a request, it receives a URL, and the first thing, almost the first thing that happens is it starts doing this rule chain. And so it goes through each of the rules in turn. So um, the, the example that I've got enabled there is the bees template for guests only. So depending on what happens with this, I might want to continue down the rule chain in case there's another rule below it that might also activate, or I might want to go, you know, that's it. I don't need to ev evaluate anything else. It's a guest. They're going to get the bees template, end of story. So the rest of the rules then get ignored. So the, the ordering of rules isn't very important. So let's have a look inside here. And we've got a big set of conditions on the left-hand side. Um, you can put in comments and so on. It's a lot of setup, lots and lots of things. The important bit is users and groups. And it says all non-logged in users. So what that means is this rule will succeed there will be a truth condition. It will run the succeed action for all non-logged in users. Now, I could reverse that and say all logged in users will get the bees template. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to go all, uh, all non-logged in users. We could also do it by user group. And as you can see, there are about a million other things that we can, we can trigger this on. I'll look briefly at some of those in a minute. But I mean, the rest of that stuff is just ignored. So on the right-hand side, what happens if this succeeds? So what happens if the left-hand side succeeds? We find a non-logged-in user. We've got a drop-down to pick one of the templates that I've got installed on my test system, and it's going to show the bees template. Now, there's a whole lot of other really cool things you can do, like setting the default menu item, the active highlighted menu item, unpublishing menu items, so we can make certain menu items disappear, which is so cool. Um, we can also set cookies or session variables so that um, the, the result of this action can then be remembered and, and might, could trigger other rules as well. Okay, it's a really important point because if you detect something like a landing page, a landing page might have a very specific URL. So you detect that and you set a template, but then the person clicks on a link. And all of a sudden, the URL isn't the landing page URL anymore. So in that case, it would, it would forget that new template that you set, unless you set a cookie or a session variable as, as a result of your action. Then you have another rule which detects that session variable. So the second page they go back to, it doesn't catch the landing page, but it does catch the cookie, and it can then perform the same action again, or a different one. And of course, you can run PHP and get the option of stopping processing or process the next rule in the chain or redirect to something completely different. So you can redirect to another page on your site or an external URL. Now, just last night, um, I thought of a whole lot of other neat things I've been meaning to do for a long time as rules, so I started writing some. Um, you could change the page title. So this, this would be this kind of a search engine friendly sort of search engine optimization sort of thing that you might want to do. So under certain conditions, you might want to change the page title, meta description, keywords, um, add additional HTML into the header so you could get it to load ex an extra CSS file or raw CSS or a JavaScript file or just any old raw HTML that would get put into the header of the page. So this is you know, really powerful stuff because it's, it's, I mean, I know there are lots of other ways that you can do some of the stuff, but you don't have to alter your template. Um, it's completely dynamic and arbitrary, and it's part of an overall rule chain system so that 
if you make some of these things your business rules, they can end up triggering a number of different actions simultaneously on your site. And that's one of, one of the aims I was talking about at the beginning. And so if this rule fails, then you get the same set of things again. So you could, you could do particular things if it succeeds or particular things if it fails. Um, if the rule, uh, well, then it, it will either move on to the next rule or not, depending on what you told it to do. Okay, so that, that's just a very, very quick, basic look at, at what makes up one rule. And uh, we'll see some good examples later of, of how this is used in practice. Ah, you probably want to see it working. Um, okay, so there's my page, and I'm not logged in, so it's using B's template. If I was to log in, then it used a different one. And log out again, and back to B's. So it worked. Okay, now you might have noticed the big message thing in the middle. That's a debugging mode that I've added in, which is um, really useful because sometimes these rules, you set them up and they're really complicated and you wonder, why is this thing not working? You know, is there a bug? You know, have I got my logic wrong? Just what's going on? So the debug mode prints up this message and it says processing rule ID 2 and it names which one it was. Um, it's doing a check for whether the user is logged in or not, succeeding, and so it's starting the succeed action for that rule, finish the succeed action, the default template was set to B's, finished all the rules, final template set to B's. So it's really, really great to be able to, to look at that and go, oh, that's why it didn't pick up that rule, because it never got there, because something else happened. Okay. So those are some of, not, not all of the actions I, I talked about before are actually in meta templates. Um, some, some of them won't be too hard to add and I definitely want to be able to add them. But th these are just the kind of things that people who don't know Joomla might expect you to be able to do. But because we've got our Joomla hats on, we think, well, we just can't do that. It doesn't fit into our, the, the way that we see Joomla working. But I think it could and should. Okay, case studies. Um, I promise that I'll give you some case studies, and some of these are just so impressive. I, I'm amazed at what people do when you give them some tools, and they just come up with really innovative, nifty uses for them. So my first one is icontest.com. Unfortunately, um, the guys had, had various problems, not so much on the site. I think it's business issues, and the site is offline. Um, so I've... Uh, I asked them to put it online for me, so I've made a short screencast so that you can see what, how it works. Okay, first of all, the business rules for icontest.com. Um, first one is use dedicated templates for specific devices. So for iPhone and iPad, he wants people to get a, a, a very specific device for those. The second one is um, use a dedicated template for Facebook embedding. So when his site is used as a Facebook application, he wants to use a different template. And of course, he wants to make sure that once people, well, once people exit Facebook and go back to the normal site, that it goes back to the normal template again. Because when it's embedded in an iframe, of course, um, the, the application itself doesn't know after the first page where it does know it's a Facebook application. After that, it doesn't know, it doesn't get told about the change. It can't detect whether or not it's in an iframe, or if, it, if you know a way that it can do it, I'd love to know. Um, so it, it's really important that if a person goes back to the site outside of Facebook, that it goes back to its normal template again. So um, cool stuff that we did on it, um, we, in order to detect that the site was being used in Facebook, we pick up the, the, um, the API key from a post request. So um, the, the first time that a website that's been embedded as an application, um, the first time that it receives a request, it's actually a post request. Not a, well, it's got a get request as well, but it's also got post data in it, which contains the Facebook API key. So you can test for that inside um, Meta Template and use that to trigger um, a template change, which is really cool. Um, it needs to remember the current context in a cookie 
I described that earlier, that, um, you know, that the first time something happens, that's fine, you can detect that. The second time, you need to have some kind of memory of what happened last time to continue the action. And it needs to be able to d detect some kind of URL parameters to trigger the return to the normal template again when you go outside of Facebook. So let's see if I got my demo here. Okay, let's have a look. Right, iContest.com. It's in French, so I don't understand everything of it. Um, but it's a lot to do with audio. And so that's the site. And we're going to switch to iPhone mode using Safari. And do a quick resize so your iPhone's a bit smaller. Just while it loads. And there is a site in iPhone mode. And there's nothing really surprising about that, but I just wanted to show it. And not everything on site works, which is probably part of the reason why it's not online. Okay, so we flick to a different page and it's still using the iPhone template. Okay, so let's have a look at the Facebook view, apps.facebook.com slash iContis. And this is the same website, but you can see that the template is completely different. It's um, different from the iPhone one as well, and there's a whole lot of stuff there. And Right, just there, there's a little link at the bottom that if you click on that, that goes to the, it opens a, a new page, and I'll just pause that for a moment. The URL at the top there says icontest.com question mark mobile equals one. Well, the word mobile is, is a misnomer, it should really be something else, but it did, that triggers it to go back to a normal template again. So on that page, when it's used as a Facebook application, there is a link, and if you click on that, it opens up a new window with the, the normal website, but it's got that additional URL parameter in it, which we pick up in Meta Template and use that to trigger it to go back to the normal template again. And yeah, and I think that's about it. I'm just doing another page to show that it works, and um, there's some. Nice clever stuff in there that um, I think it wanted my location, so it yeah, picked up that I'm from Wanganui in New Zealand, um, which is where, where I was when I made the screencast. Okay, so that, that's a, a, a brief example of a single website on a single domain name that has got an iPhone mode and an iPad mode, which I didn't, didn't demonstrate. When it's embedded into Facebook, it has a, um, a different setup. In fact, the, the front page of it was even different, um, not just the template. So I thought that was pretty cool. Okay, another one. Um, it's largely in French, quebecguitar.com. Um, I was contacted by this guy who, who bought me to Template Pro, and he wanted to do some stuff with it that I'd never ever thought of before, so I had to work with him a lot. And um, I hope you'll be blown away by this, because I still am. Okay, so what's his business? Um, he sells online, private, and correspondence guitar tuition. Um, he provides a marketing platform for guitar teachers to connect to prospective students. So he's very interested in matching up students and teachers. Um, he's a professional guitarist himself, um, but he, you know, part of his, his business strategy is to, is to open it up to lots more teachers and, and lots more pupils around the world, not just in Quebec. So the business rules that he's got, well, he's, this guy um, loves marketing. <laughs> um, he wants to determine what people are looking for using any available clues. That this is his business. This is, this is really how he's going to make money. So the Google search query, you probably know that when you do a Google search and then click on that item to go through to the website, the website can pick up the search terms that you used for searching. Okay, so using that, that gives a very good clue to what people were really searching for when they went through to your site. So if you can customize your site according to that, then your customers are going to feel like they really hit the right site. So Google search query, um, when he's running AdSense campaigns, the particular landing page that lands on obviously lets him know what they clicked on to get there, so that he can then customize according to the, the particular thing that they clicked on the GOIP country of origin, so you can pick up what country they're from, um, which Meta Template makes really easy to do, and browser language as well. So with a combination of all those things, you can have a reasonable idea of what somebody was really looking for. 
and then use appropriate templates and modules to support that particular theme. So, for example, um, if they were searching for girls' guitar tuition or guitar tuition for girls, then he's got a template for girls, and it r really supports that. Um, if you're searching for metal or electric, or if you're searching from Indonesia, there are different setups and different templates that are really geared towards all of those things. And those are the exact ones that he, he supports at the moment. Um, and then because he wants to know what's going on, all of this is tracked in Google Analytics. So even Google Analytics knows what template was used for each conversion. Okay, so the, a conversion in this case is um, a form, an RS Form Pro, that gets sent through with an expression of interest, and uh, th this then triggers things in Google Analytics so that he can look in Analytics and see, ah, you know, with that particular template, I got these conversions. So ultimately, he should have enough information to maybe narrow down um, which ones convert best. So, cool stuff. Um, detecting the search terms in the Google Referrer, uh, for example, Metal, and then matching that to the template. GIP and language detection, um, country and language specific templates and modules. The template choices are sticky, and by that I mean that they're cookied for the user. So if the user goes in from a Google search, search for girls guitar tuition in Quebec, finds the site, bookmarks it, and goes back next week, they still get the girls template. So I mean, if they then search for, for metal, then it'll change the metal template, but you know, by and large, this is going to work really well, and I think it does. Um, RS form includes info from meta, meta template in the contact emails. So in the contact e emails that they get sent with expressions of interest, uh, we've got it so that it picks up some of this other information that we've been working on and it can notify them immediately without having to go to Google Analytics. Um, but of course, Google Analytics um, tracks the template and conversion info as well. So demo, yay. Oops, demo. Um, I can remember which one it is. Okay, so um, I did a Google search for electric guitar lessons Quebec. And um, I'm not doing these live because I know what the internet's like here. So on the second tab, or third tab, you'll see what happens when you click through on his website, which is down here somewhere. Right. Quebecguitar.com, student testimonials. Click on that one and you get that template. So that's the electric guitar search. If I repeated the search for Metal Guitar Lessons Quebec and clicked on his link, which is this one here. So that's for, I think it's perhaps testimonials or something. Doesn't really matter too much because the template is metal. And likewise for, oh, hang on. Um, OK, this wasn't metal. This is probably Girls Guitar Lessons Quebec. Click through to that, and you get the girls one. Um, and so we've got various search terms that it will pick up, and it will trigger this particular thing. And it's, isn't that cool? <laughs> I'm just really impressed. And uh, as I said, it's sticky, so um, if we then go and jump on, I'm assuming this is going to work, jump to private lessons, um, then it's got all that stuff there. Now, we've got various other things on here, like um, these banners and so on, that have got girls on them and so on. Um, they're, they're done with um, Metamod um, for controlling the modules. You could probably do it with advanced module managers just as easily. You can detect templates on, yeah. Yeah, so whichever way you want to do it, it's basically picking up the fact that it's on the girls' template, so it shows the girls' module. And if it was on the other templates, it would show the appropriate modules for those. So, that's that. Okay, um, I want to put in a little plug for, for Alexander. Um, he is wanting a marketing partner, <laughs> if, if anyone is interested. Um, in Netherlands um, or, or Europe, Europe is interested in music and has got strong marketing skills to really bring this to a wider audience. So if you're interested, um, then um, get in touch with them on guitar, sorry, quebecguitar.com. And 
info at. Okay, next example is um, even more impressive, but it's, it's hard to really convey how deep this thing goes. Um, it's, it's not as immediately apparent as the last one. But anyway, growthenginelocal.com. Um, what's the business about? It, it sells and implements local listing management for small businesses. So that's things like Google Places, um, Yelp, Yellow Pages, and so on. Um, so um, it's kind of like search engine optimization, but a lot more hands-on, um, making sure that small businesses have, have got all of their information up to date on all these local listing directories, which apparently um, are driving an awful lot of business at the moment. Um, and it takes an awful lot of time to maintain your own business listings. I think particularly in the states where these guys are based, um, there seem to be lots and lots of different directories that, that people are using. And um, so their business is about um, being able to manage that for people. So that's the first part of it. But the part that needs meta template and the rule engines is the affiliate program. Um, the affiliate program is used to match clients to a local affiliate. Now, the affiliates, I've got a feeling, are more like um, franchises because um, the contact details of the affiliate become part of the template. It, so it gets very, very strongly branded with the affiliate information when you go onto the site. So the affiliate isn't just pushing a link, but um, the, the site is strongly, strongly branded with the affiliate's, affiliate's information. And yeah, so the site's branded. Okay, so the business rules, how the business rules work. So the affiliate program brands the site to a local affiliate once the site has identified the location of the visitor through whatever means it can. This is why it's a, a little bit like the last one, trying to customize something to the, to the customer. So it uses um, GOIP, not just for countries, but um, particularly in America and, and some, some other countries too. The, the zip code detection in GOIP is somewhat accurate um, and can be used to, to get a zip code for somebody when they visit your site. Um, or the URL or um, people can enter their own zip code in the form. The branding includes banners, logos, contact numbers, pricing, because depending on how much the affiliate has paid for the privilege, the pricing can be different. So they display different pricing. The live chat will go through to the affiliate. Um, and different menu items show up or disappear, um, all, all based on these rules. And once it's been determined, the affiliate to customer link is permanent, and this will eventually get stored in the database once they get a login. So the, the, the again, it's a little bit more like franchising than affiliate stuff because um, there's going to be a business relationship then between the affiliate, so-called affiliate, and the customer. That's going to be the contact person. They're going to be doing some of the work. Although this website does much of the work too. Okay, so how the how's this stuff going to work? Um, cool stuff. Um, some of the basic form processing is actually done within Meta Template, um, and it can be done on any URL. Now, the reason why that's interesting or cool is because usually if you use a form component, that submit the form submission will go to the form component directly. So the URL might be com underscore RS form pro or whatever it is for RS forms. And once, once that's been processed, then generally the form after it's done whatever it's going to do, then has to redirect back to another page again. So there's a page redirection and there's management of, of that process. Um, now if you're using Meta Template Pro or Meta Template, which he wasn't even using the pro version, he was using the free version for all this stuff, you can detect something that comes in on the URL, use that to govern what happens on the rest of the page, and then let the rest of the page proceed as normal. So you don't need to do a redirect, you just change what happens on the page, take away some menu items, change the template, and the form processing has still occurred at that very early stage. Um, another cool thing is that the affiliate links create permanent linkage. Um, Okay, affiliate links being if, if there's a particular URL that an affiliate uses to link into the site, if somebody follows that link, that, that will create a permanent um, link between the two. Um, whereas if somebody's just on the site and types in their own zip code, 
then um, they can change affiliate depending on what zip code they typed in. So it's kind of fluid for a while, but as soon as um, they've actually made a relationship or, or made a, a login, then they're fixed to the particular local affiliate that they were using. And we use GYP for zip codes, and we also remove and hide menu items for some users depending on what information we've got or haven't got. Um, it also gets information from AEC, I think that's Advanced Exploration Control. It's kind of a subscription system for Joomla. I, th I think that controls all the, the financial side of it and um, the expiry of those accounts that are set up. And th so MetaTemplate is able to tap into that information as well from the database. Okay, so um, quick demo. Time's going by. Quick demo of these things. Uh, again, it's not going to be live. But let's see. Okay, so if you just go to growthenginelocal.com, then you get a basic page with GEI Local, um, their telephone number, live support online connects to them, and just take a note of those things there. Now, down the bottom, if I can't pick up that you're in the States, which of course we're not, we don't have a zip code, um, if you type in a zip code and submit, then it can load up another page. Oops. So when I type in the first zip code, you see that the logo here has changed. So that's first page profiles, which obviously operates in zip code 95008. Contact us number, I think it was different. And the list of menu items is different as well. So what's happened is that there is now a purchase menu item. Because we know what the affiliate is, um, therefore there is a price that has been fixed, therefore they can purchase now. Whereas previously, because they didn't know where they were from and there was no affiliate, then they couldn't actually quote a price. And so we've got a few different zip codes there, and you can see that the banners and so on are just a little bit different each time. Um, I'm not going to demonstrate using an actual entry URL, you know, a direct affiliate link, because that would actually fix in um, a particular affiliate, and then I've got to clear the cookies to, to be able to demonstrate it again. Um, so behind the scenes, there's, there's really a lot going on in here. Um, the, the look and feel of the site, it, it might not look hugely different, um, but it it actually is, and there's, there's just a lot going on. Um, if we go to purchase one of these, yeah, I don't know if this is going to work. Yep, we've got internet. Okay, that's why I pre-generated all the pages because it's too slow. Okay, so that that's those demonstrations. Um, I. I could demonstrate one more thing. Um, um, right, this is part of a big website that I administer for OM.org, and that's my, my main employer. And I do a whole lot of things on here. Um, I actually use it for redirections because we, we had a number of, of old versions of the site, and it's a, it's a big site that's been around a long time. And all of the old URLs are still, you know, there are links to them, and Google sends people to the old links sometimes still. And um, the, it, it's not just a one-to-one -one relationship. There's actually like hundreds and hundreds of pages, um, but based on particular URLs and IDs and so on. So I'm able to... Um, use these rules to, to pick up the value of the old URL and switch around some of the, the figures and IDs, look up a database or do a call on something else in order to find out the new URL for that item. And I know there are lots of ways that you can do this. Um, I, I don't think I could have done it um, in something like SH404 um, because that would be like one URL at a time and there'd be probably 10,000 URLs that this thing actually redirects. Um, so. I'm not going to show you, well, in fact, I probably could show you. Um, redirect country profile pages. Let me see what I'm doing here. Okay, so the page URL matches a particular um, regular expression. Then, oh, there's no advanced PHP there. Then in the succeed actions, it runs a little bit of PHP, which maps a whole lot of countries to ID numbers, 
just again they're old versions of things and then at the very end of that list sorry this is a bit of a pain um, it, it does a redirection based on man manipulation of all that information so I was able basically to put in some logic um, as, as part of a, of a business process and it's all handled basically in the same interface as a lot of other you know, essentially business decisions that are made on the site. And um, even redirecting the spellings of a particular, of, of a web page, it can sort of pick up all the different, um, I've used a regular expression for the word opportunities <laughs> it's just there's so many ways to misspell it um so i was able in here just to put all all the permutations of, of the word opportunities and then the, the succeed action for this is simply to redirect page here to one of the menu items opportunities so it's kind of a nice way again there are lots of different ways of doing this you wouldn't have to do it this way but it proved useful for me Okay, so um, having shown you some examples, have you got any questions about anything I've talked about? And um, then I'd like to open up a little bit more for a general discussion about the kind of things that um, would be useful for you to be able to do with a tool like this. Um, and you know, any more discussion on that. So should we just go for questions first? Yes. Um, meta template, the free version is free. Um, the pro version, the, the, the difference in the pro version is that um, on the left hand side, the, the free version stops here. So you get the quick rules, including random probability and GOIP, so you can do GOIP stuff. Um, but it doesn't have all this other stuff about date and time, browsers, menus, page types, sections, categories, components, users, groups. Um, and I don't know where my virtue mart stuff is. There should be virtue mart in there as well. Anyways, um, but you have got a PHP box, so you can basically any any bit of PHP that you write can return true or false. And if it returns true, then that's a succeed action. If it's false, then that's a failure action. So the right hand side of of meta template free has got all of these succeed actions, so you can still perform the actions. Um, although the new ones which I'm putting in, I'm actually considering, um, in fact, yeah, they don't actually show up on this one. I must have done this page before I added the other ones. Um, so, so some of the new actions about changing the page title and meta description and, and so on, I probably put into the advanced one. So the, the cost of it's $25 for the pro version. Any other questions? Um, there's not, there's not at the moment, and that's something I would consider doing. Um, does it complicate much? Uh, it, well, it certainly does complicate things. Um, <clears throat> I think from a user's point of view, it's, it's, it gets complicated enough already, even with a single chain and, and a list of things to go down. Um, what I'm finding with, with some clients is that once they get a really big list of, of things, and it's difficult to know, you know what order to put stuff into because you've got different relationships going on. Some things need to go before other things and after other things, and it gets a bit tangled up. It, I'm probably going to look at, at making multiple chains so that you could have several small chains, um, and each one of them is, is a little bit independent of the others. And that might simplify some of, some of that. Um, so far, there hasn't been any problem that I haven't been able to solve with the logic of just having a single chain. But it does get complicated. Uh, so you have something about the There is. Um, actually, yeah, this, is, this particular site doesn't run VirtuMart, so the VirtuMart things don't show up on it. Yeah, yeah it was. Um, let me see. I, did, I won't find the example for you. Yes, you can. Yep. 
yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's a plugin system, um, and so that my free version and the pro version are basically identical, except one has the plugins in it. Um, the pro has the plugins in it. Yeah. Well, I mean, the pro has got the actual plugins that do the work, but both of them have got the ability to use plugins. So I um, <laughs> probably shouldn't say this, but if you made a plugin, you could put it into the free version, and it would work perfectly well. What, what kind of other um, extensions would you want to be able to query in order to do rules like this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I suppose there are two sides to that. One is um, the detection of you know some of those conditions. Um, then there's a question of what kind of actions you want to perform on that. And I've found the actions are a lot more difficult to code than the conditions. The conditions are generally easy because you can look at the URL, you can look at cookies, you can look up the database, and you know just normal PHP programming stuff. You can work out anything. When it comes to actions. Um, most most of the the stuff that goes on here um, gets done at a very early stage of the of the page process. So it's when the URL is first first comes in, and it's the first plugin, the first possible point I could use to um, to to insert into the into the process. So um, I, I mean, I'm thinking for Virtue Mark. I, I know Virtue Mark more. There there are some things that you can't really do very well at that point because Virtue Mark itself hasn't been loaded. So um, you would have to be quite careful about how you coded that. If the extension is aware of your extension. Sure. Sky's the limit. Yeah. And yeah, good. Can plug it in mm -hmm. to this so the user can configure it easier. Yeah. So it's the whole point. You can do it with the rules mm -hmm. set as it is. Yeah. But it's yeah. Well, I mean, for, for simple actions like changing the template, changing the default menu item, or the highlighted menu item, um, and you know just the, the other basic action things that we were looking at. It's it, it's not difficult. Um, you know, it's it's really pretty simple. Have you thought of a wizard like interface to define the rules? So a, a what interface? Have you thought of a wizard like interface? A wizard? Oh, okay. Let the users define the rules uh, as opposed to your big box. Yeah, uh, the, yeah, d definitely. The, this is something I think about constantly. Um, because you know that the more conditions you put on that list, you know, the more huge it becomes. And I mean, I I miss things all the time. I kind of think, why isn't this real working? And I, there's just one little thing in there that is not obvious. Um, it, part of the difficulty is that it's it takes a lot of work to make a good um, a good interface that can handle logic operations, particularly. So. Um, I mean, Drupal has a good, um, a really good example. I had a, a close look at it before I did this presentation. Um, so, basically, instead of having a big form with all the all the different conditions, you just um, say, "I want to add a new condition," and then you choose which condition out of a list, and then that pulls up a little bit of interface for it, and you can configure that. And um, then the only stuff that you see is stuff that you've configured. You know, that that would be nice, and I would consider stealing it from Drupal um, if I thought I could do it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's a possibility. The thing is, my time is limited, and doing my 1.6 version is taking all of my time. And you know, it's it's getting there, but it's it's very slow work. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but it will come. You know, be, be, there are a lot of people using this for clever stuff, and um, you know, I'm get, getting asked about it every day. So that's where I've got to put my effort. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Got a couple minutes to go <laughs> if you want to. Otherwise, we can wrap it up. If, if you want to see this, you know, if you've got any particular things that you'd like to to, to you know explore, you know, could it do this? Could it do that? Um, just find me. I, you know, I'll be around until tomorrow afternoon. We're going to leave for Amsterdam a bit early. 
Um, but I've also got a stand just out there, so sometimes I'm out there. Just come and talk to me. Uh, also, the forum on my website on metamodpro.com is very active, and um, I'm generally very <laughs> responsive to, to questions that are on there. Um, it's probably about a week, a week late on that, being over here, haven't really answered any questions. But um, yeah, ask questions on there and <clears throat> try it out. Um, on the back of my business card, um, there is a 30% off voucher. So if you don't have one of those yet, there's probably one or two left in here with the free pens. And I've got more um, if you want one. Okay.